Isn't it awesome in how God establishes our steps and sometimes we don't even know it? Or oh, we think we're so bad sometimes. <laughs> you know, people say, I'm bad. But they were on the trend to say, I'm prideful. <laughs> then people are going around, my bad. In other words, they made a mistake. It's amazing how the slangs change the words. Did you ever wonder where they came from? Hello. People bring curses on themselves. They call each other dogs. Hey, dog. Not realizing it's a demon-possessed individual in the Bible. It's amazing the words that come forth and, 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 the, and, the, and these words and the source of these words are vitally important. How many people go around and say, I'm lucky when it comes to the word Lucifer? In all of these areas where people have no idea what they speak is what they eat and what they eat is what they become. Because Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. There's always that area he tries to bring us into fear. And people don't even realize that fear is their ruling influence in their life. And the word tells us that we're to make what is unseen become seen. Unless we make what is unseen become seen, we'll constantly be deceived. We'll think that our life is just a life of work, play, eat, sleep. Witness and die. Well, there's more than that. There's a lot more than that. You know, on this road and journey that God has brought us on, there's areas of pit stops. There's an area where it's like going on a train ride and you're going somewhere and you get off the station and there's all kinds of things in this station. There's a restaurant there. There's... Uh, gifts and all kinds of things. And, and in our journey, God begins to allow us to stop and focus on the areas that he's put across our table, not what's off of our table. One of the things that happens to individuals is they begin to move all the stuff that's on their table for something else when God has said, you haven't finished this yet. You haven't finished this yet. And making what is unseen to become seen in our life, knowing that there is a, a world within a world within a world. There's a world of the natural. There's a world of the spiritual. And in that world of the spiritual, there's the world of eternity. But in the world of the spiritual, we have a battle going on. There's a demonic realm. And there's a righteous realm. And that war continues in everyday life. It doesn't stop. That's why the word says, we do not fight, fight flesh and blood, but powers of darkness and wickedness in heavenly places. Sometimes in this course that God has given us, he begins to, as we stop, the purpose of the stopping what's happening, even though we're on the same course and things come across our table, is to gain more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Sometimes there's things that we missed along the way. Right now, one of our focuses here in this house is, well, it's always constantly to make what's unseen to be seen. There's an area that we are dealing with right now. We are putting together videos and things to that degree and, uh, uh, and doing research in the area uh, of what's truly governing us, truly what is Satan's kingdom, truly what does 666 really mean and its implementations in the areas of our life. What's he imparting in us? Many people don't even know that they're being imparted with things on a daily basis. They wonder why their struggles and confusions and frustrations. 
there's something that we're going to talk about today. It's called ruling influence. Everyone say ruling influence. We are being influenced by the unseen realm. And in it, if you're not recognizing what your influence is or knowing the fruits of this influence, we'll constantly be misled. And how many of y'all want to be led? The Bible says those who are led by the Spirit are sons and daughters of God. Those who are misled are sons of darkness. And we don't want to be misled, especially the time and season that we are in right now. One of the things the enemy wants to do is try to cause you to focus on other things to bring fulfillment, try to cause you to focus on yourself, try to focus on all of these other things, but what is really happening to prevent you from being sensitive of what you're being influenced by. You know, how many times have we done things and said, my gosh, I can't believe I did that again. Or, or we can look back in our lives and go, man, I regret that, that decision. You know, but we can't go back. And one of the things we can't allow us to be influenced is your past. Your past can no longer influence in you. What you do is you learn from your past mistakes. Those are a reminder. Amen. But your past could no longer influence you because if your past, past influences you, you are no longer living from the future. Many people don't even know what living from the future is. Those are the promises of God. And if you don't know the promises of God, you can't live from the future. You are living in the past. That means you're relying on your own strength. You're relying on your own will, your own abilities, your talents. You're relying on you to fulfill and produce something. What you say is, I want. I want. This is what I want. This is what I feel. Not realizing that you're being influenced by something to create that feeling. In Matthew 6, would everybody turn to Matthew 6? In verse 19. Matthew 6, 19. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. In other words, this is materialism. He's saying don't lay up your treasures on earth. Why? See, what's happening is there's an influence there and individuals are not realizing their influence. What's influencing them? It says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. It says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If, therefore, your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. In other words, what you're seeing, what you're perceiving, well, those things are altered by what you're being influenced by. How many of y'all know that even what you see could influence you? You may see something you like, and all of a sudden it's like, yes, I want that. Well, once you, I want that, let me tell you, the enemy is there to influence you to not only get that, but go beyond your boundaries. In verse 23, it says, but if your eye is bad, I, me, myself, and I, hello, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? In other words, what's influencing you? It says, no one can serve two masters. This is confusion, isn't it? 
For either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. In other words, he's talking about money, things of materialism. You can't serve both. It doesn't mean that you're going to be poor. Hello. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a beggar. Verse 25, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Worry is associated with fear. Amen. Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. This is how he gets people in bondage. This is how he puts a chain around their neck, because they're in fear. See, when God blesses you with something, there's no fear. When you bless yourself, there's fear of losing it. Has everybody got it? There's always fear of, oh, what if I lose this? What if I, oh, I bought this house and, I'm, and, and, and I put so much money into it and, and we're living there and my family's there. What, what if we lose it? Well, that's fear. Then where's your trust? Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life or what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? See, we're to eat to live. Amen? We're, 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 we're to eat, amen, so that we may maintain life, but we don't live to eat. There's a difference. Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, gather them to barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value to them? Which of you worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So what is worrying going to do? It's going to help you? No. It's going to actually open a door so the enemy can get you in more fear. See, fear promotes fear. <laughs> and then fear promotes more fear. So why do you worry about clothing? Hello, what you're going to wear? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O little faith? Little faith. Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we we wear. For after all, after all these things, the Gentiles seek. In other words, the world seeks this way. This is how the world lives. They have ruling influences. For after these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. He always meets your needs. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be what? Added to you. In other words, you are going to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, what? To remove the influence of worldly desires. Because if you're not willing to seek the kingdom of God, if you're not willing to make connection, if you're not willing to worship, if you're not willing to read the word, then you're not removing the influence. Why? Because it takes power to remove that influence. You can make promises all day long, but without the power and the anointing of Christ backing you, you will always falter. Remember the rich man. When a rich man came and he said, you know, Lord, I, I tithe, I, I feed people, I provide jobs for them, I do all of these things. Well, he was justifying by his works. Yeah. I work 40 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> but it was justifying by works. And he said, okay. So he challenged him. Sell everything you have and come and follow me. If you think you really know me, and you're saying you're doing all these things, then sell everything you have and truly follow me. 
and trust me. And the man turned away. He couldn't. He couldn't give up what he had. He couldn't give up that influence of the world because it made him somebody. When we already are somebody. Amen. See, what the enemy wants to do is place an identity on you of materialism. You know, many people walk, will look at another person or whatever. They'll, they'll drive up in a Lamborghini or Mercedes and so forth. And they'll go, ooh, I wonder who that person is. See, so there's an identity there of something behind it. I wonder how they got wealthy. I wonder what's, oh, I'd like to do that. Hallelujah. <laughs> but give it all up and follow the Lord. See, so the, in this, there's an influence that that ruling influence is what we need to begin to recognize. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Let's go a little further. In verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own own trouble. Again, materialism ruling influence. It is a ruling influence. Recognizing them is removing that influence. Amen. And it's, be, it's time that we begin to recognize in this area. Stop justifying and start recognizing. Don't justify it. Recognize it. Why? Because there are fruits of influence. There are fruits of this influence. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. In other words, he puts you in worry. If your influence is of God, it promotes unity. If your influence is of the enemy, it promotes division. It promotes rebellion. And it promotes fear. Division, rebellion, and fear. Again, many individuals are in that area not having enough or, or fear of missing what others have or do. We want to be led, not misled. And we must recognize the ruling influence. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, Second Corinthians 13. Paul says something very powerful. He says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Verse 5. Examine yourselves whether you're in the faith. In other words, you must stop. And see it through. You must realize whether you're trusting God or trusting yourself. Are you an individual with their head cut off and chasing their tail all the time? Are you trying to stay busy for peace when it's false peace? Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are what? disqualified see one of the things the enemy wants to do is disqualify you by contaminating you he contaminates you when you agree with the influences then you're easily swayed one of the things we always want to do is what is my ruling influence of this temple what's the influence of my temple what's the ruling influence and then what's the ruling influence of my house Always acknowledging that. Am I really trusting? Am I really trusting God? Or am I constantly trusting in myself? Am I even giving God the opportunity? 
See, if you're not giving God the opportunity, you can be sure that the influence is not God. And Matthew 10. Look at all the influence that is happening around us today. Children are being influenced at school in a wrong way. People are being influenced all over the place. Radio, TV, all of these influences. They're trying to influence people to get more influenced in deception. The purpose is to influence us to be deceived. Even though it may look good. Deception comes in a gift package. It influences you to open it up. Look at how many people open up their emails and come to find out they just got hacked, contaminated. And what is the deception of that influence? You know what it is? You just won something. Oh! There's a check waiting for you. Amazing in how influenced people are. Or you get something in the mail. Remember, influence, uh, uh, that deception always comes in a gift pack, <laughs> but it, what's in it is to promote deception. <laughs> in Matthew 10, is everybody there? Praise God. In verse 34. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. Hello. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to bring peace. What did he come to? I did not come to bring peace, but a what? Sword. What's the sword for? Hang on your wall? So you can fight. So you can battle, so you can cut these things loose. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Hello. He who loves father or mother, come on, read it with me, more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Wow. So the number one influence in your life and my life must be Christ's character. It must be Christ's character, and Christ's character always denied himself. Was in never want. He always knew that everything would be provided. And Revelation chapter 2. Revelation 2, verse 2. Jesus says something very powerful. Let's speak it together. He says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, this I have against you, that you have left your first love. They've left their first love. Now look at They left their first love because they did not acknowledge the ruling influence. Look at They were all works. I know your works. Jesus said, I knew your works were all good. They were all good intentions. But you've left your first love. 
In verse 5, what does he say? Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen and repent and do the what? First works. In other words, what I intended you to do. I know all the things you're doing are good. They have good intentions, but that's not what I called you to do. Go back to what I've called you to do. And the reason why you've gone, you've, not, you've left your first works is because your influence. You're not acknowledging the ruling influence in your life. Go back to the works I told you to do. Because if the ruling influence is correct, there'll be a love affair. And not, you're not laboring. You're not just laboring. Does everybody understand? You're not laboring for goods. You're not laboring for money. You're laboring unto him, knowing that he will provide all things. There's a difference. Yes, we must work to eat. Hello, no worky, no eaty. But there's a boundary to everything, isn't there? There are people that work 50, 60, 70 hours a week to try to make ends meet. Why? You know, one of the things is the enemy influences individuals to get in debt. They, he influences them to buy things that put them into debt. And they're not recognizing these influences that are ruling them. Then they got to work harder to pay that debt. They got to work harder to pay this debt. They got to work, and they're always in debt. We live in a debt society. It is ruled by debt. One of the things we need to do is get out. Get back to our first love. Realizing and recognizing what is the ruling influence. Remember he said, you must hate your mother, your sister, your brother, your children, your wife, your spouses. In other words, nothing can be between you and him. Nothing. He must be your number one influence. When, he lo when you lose him as your number one influence, you will be easily influenced. When Jesus is no longer the ruling influence, others, let me tell you, they're waiting. Those spirits, those demonic forces are waiting to replace Jesus in your life. They wait. They fight. Go to the book of Judges chapter 13. Hallelujah. Ruling influence. In verse 1. Judges 13, verse 1. Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. Let me tell you, Philistines are associated with demonic forces. In other words, the Lord delivered them into their hands. How many of you know that God will use even the demonic forces to correct something? Who do you think is going to use in, the book, in, in, in tribulation time until he comes and kicks butt with all the heavenly forces. <laughs> so they did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord turned them over. He said, okay, you don't want to follow me? Then go ahead. I'm lifting from you. You got it. So what does the devil do? Come steal, kill, and what? Destroy. Now there was a certain man from Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Maniah. And his wife was barren and had no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to what? Drink. Does alcohol bring influence? Yes. How about alcohol in the house? Does that bring influence? Yes. Why? Because it's an accursed item and it draws demonic activity. And it will influence every single one in that house. Do not drink wine or, or similar drink. And do not eat anything unclean. 
For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. In other words, the Lord said, okay, that's enough. <laughs> now I'm going to deliver you. Now it's time to come out. This man's name was Samson. And Revelation 14. Go to the next chapter. So Samson was anointed by God to deliver Israel from the demonic holds of the Philistines. I mean judges, I'm sorry. Judges 14. What did I say? Ooh, I like Revelation. We'll go there later. Judges 14, and verse 1 through 3. Now Samson went down to Tamar and saw a woman in Tamar of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman. <laughs> I've seen a woman. In Tamar of the daughters of the Philistines. Wait a minute. He's supposed to deliver Israel from the Philistines, and he sees a woman. Hello. And now, therefore, get her for me as a wife. <laughs> woman. It's like sounds like a caveman. There's the woman. Verse 3, then his father and his mother rebuked him and said, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren? Hello? Don't be unevenly yoked, good unbelievers. Isn't there any money? Come on, there's got to be somebody amongst. <laughs> or among our people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? In other words, the heathen, the demonic tribe, seed of the serpent, Nephilims, hybrids. You want to go marry one of them? And Samson said to his father, get her for me, for she pleases me. Oh, I wonder who told him that. Samson's first ruling influence was the presence of God. But it became replaced with lust and perversion. And Judges 16. In verse 1. Well, I guess that didn't work out, so Samson continued his journey in hunting for the woman. Now, Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went into her. In other words, he had sex. When the Gazaites were told Samson has come there, here, they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. There were quiet all night and saying in the morning when it is daylight we shall kill him and samson lay low till midnight then he arose at midnight and took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two gate posts pulled them up bar and all put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces hebron afterward it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of sarak which name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, Entice him. Find out where his great strength lies and by what means we may overcome him and that we may bind him to afflict him and every one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Look at all the ruling influences. Does everybody see this? So all of a sudden, look at when you start following the Lord, ruling influences are going to start coming. They're going to try to replace the character of Christ with their influences. 
their characters. Lust. Money. Look at Delilah. Fame. Is everybody okay? Look at even in the world, homosexuality, perversion. Look at why do you think they put pornography on it trying to bring a ruling influence? All of these ruling influences. Delilah was paid. And in verse 21, look at the end result is. She eventually learned Samson's strength. Let me tell you, the enemy will eventually remove you from the presence of God if you allow those ruling influences. But I'm a believer. Listen, believers walk away from the presence of God. It says, then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. And brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. Because why? They found out the secret from the woman. He finally opened his heart to the lust. He was willing to exchange the influence and character of God for the influence to fulfill one's lust. They shaved off his head. He became weak. They took him, bound him, and they poked out his eyes. One of the things the enemy does is try to blind you. He blinds you. Why? Because deception is a purpose of blinding. When people are deceived, they are blinded. I've said to many people, you're deceived. Oh, no, man. Listen, the word also says that your heart is the most deceitful thing when people tell me they're being led by their heart, you better find out what fruit that is. Is it causing division, rebellion? Does everybody understand? Is it promoting fear? What is it? Well, then you'll know what the ruling influence is. In Ephesians chapter 4. And we have to be very sensitive to these things now because there are multiple ruling in influences right now. And these influences promote deception, and deception is blindness. Ephesians 4. In verse 30. Ephesians 4, verse 30. When we begin to agree with these influences and allow them to begin to rule our life, and, and it doesn't always... Look at when we think of, oh, mean your whole life. No, I'm talking about a moment. I'm talking about a day. How about a decision? How about a ruling influence influencing your decision that day? Not recognizing it. Well, when we agree with that ruling influence and we make a decision, it grieves the Holy Spirit. Look at this, verse 30. Do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness. Listen, if you're ruled by bitterness, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. How about wrath? These are the things that he's warning us. Don't be ruled by. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another. Ten Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So we do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, he steps back. You might not even know it. And you're just busy, 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 busy. Don't even realize you've grieved the Holy Spirit because you think you're doing all the wonderful things that are right and good. but you're really not promoting the kingdom of God. Oh, you may witness here and testify here, but remember, even Jesus said, 
Many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, I've done this in your name. I've done that. And he'll say, I don't know you. Why? Because they practice lawlessness. Lawlessness is promoted by ungodly ruling influences that promote deception and blindness. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, Hallelujah. In verse 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The only thing that you're going to be accounted for when you get home is the things of what you've sowed and souls. So everybody got it. Your works according to the will of God. If you sow it according to the will of God, accord, not according to your will, that means that we must be led. Well, the Bible says do this. Well, did God tell you to do that? See, without God telling you to do that, there's no relationship. See, so many people go out and try and use the Bible to rescue them. But they really had no relationship. That's why the Lord said, I don't know you. Now, to know him means that there's contact every day. You're making communication with him. You're knowing his unction, his presence. You're being led by his spirit. Those who are led by his spirit are sons of God. So we want to be led by this influence. And this influence by the spirit of God will promote the character of Christ. If the character of Christ is not being manifested in your home, then there's another influence. If it's not being manifested in your mirror, there's another influence. And it's our responsibility to search out these influences and uproot them. And stop blaming everybody else. It's your responsibility, individually. Amen? For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and that snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which draw men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O oh man or woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. I'm going to say this again. Everybody with me? Read it with me. But you, O oh man or woman of God, flee these things and pursue what? Righteousness, godliness, faith. Love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things before Christ Jesus who witnesses the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep his commandment without spot, blameless, and to our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time, he who is blessed and only continent, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. In Second Timothy ch chapter 3, Second Timothy chapter 3. But know this, in the last days perilous times will come for a lot. Men will be what? 
Lovers of themselves. Why? Because uh, there'll be that influence of promotion of self more and more. And we're seeing it more and more. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness but deny its power, and from such people turn away. For these are the sort of, do creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women, load them down with sins, led away with various lusts, Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, Purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch and Icium and Lystra. What per persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must, everyone say you must, continue in the things which you have learned and be assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise from salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And we're seeing more and more of this manifest. There's more and more Influence. You can see individuals. You know what the ruling influence of an individual is. You can see it. Why? Because you'll know that ruling influence by its fruits. Go to the book of Leviticus. So, we must continue in the things that we've learned. So, in other words, we must put things into practice. So many times, people are not using what they've learned. They say, yes, yes, yeah, 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 I got it, yeah, yeah. And then they go and they don't put it into practice. Listen, you can't fight the unseen spirit realm in the flesh. And you cussing at them ain't going to do no good. <laughs> Leviticus 26. I hear all kinds of names for Satan, but it don't do no good. <laughs> Leviticus 26, verse 1. Let's speak it together. You shall not make idols for yourselves, neither a carved image nor a sacred pillar shall you rear up for yourselves, nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall last time, the time of vintage, and the vintage shall la last time the time of sowing. You shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. I will give you peace in the land and you shall lie down and none of you will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. You shall chase your enemies and they shall fall by the sword before you. Five of you shall chase a hundred and in a hundred of you put 10,000 to flight. Your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. For I will look on you favorably and make you fruitful, multiply you and confirm my covenant with you. You shall eat the old harvest and clear out the old because of the new. 
I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God, and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their slaves. I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you walk upright. But if you do not obey me and do not observe all these commandments, and if you despise my statutes, or if your soul abhors my judgments, so that you do not perform all my commandments, but break my covenant, I will also do this to you. I will even appoint terror over you, wasting disease, fever, which shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of the heart. And you shall sow your seeds in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. I will set my face against you, and you shall be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee from no one pursues you. After all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. I will break the pride of your power. I'll make your heavens like iron and your earth like bronze, and your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield its produce, nor shall the trees of the land yield their fruit. Now, as an individual, we can see that this is a pretty devastating thing. This is what God is doing. These are judgments of God. If you step back and look at our country, because our leaders have turned their face away from God. Look at what's happening now. Rains are flooding. They're not producing. Fires are burning. People have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. You know, Obama signed a law in 2011 that actually says they can come and take your land at any time. The GMO, it's a seed that they've produced. It's a modified seed. It's actually a hybrid seed that they are producing all over now to replace healthy food. It has tremendous side effects. GMO, God move over. There was a testimony on TV I was watching the other day, or on a computer, about some of the GMO seeds that went onto his farm. Hundreds and hundreds of acres. See, because when you spray pesticides on it, it doesn't die. But everything around it does. So what had happened was his farm grew these GMOs. He didn't know. It just got on his property. And when he went to harvest, the owners of the GMO sued him, took his harvest and everything. He lost millions and millions of dollars because he didn't have approval to use the GMO I thought, man, why didn't he turn around and sue them for trespassing? But he would have lost. See, the EPA, his purpose is to demote business because things are being ruled now by satanic. The 13 bloodlines of Satan have taken over not only this country, but are taking over the world to produce one world order. We must be careful of the ruling influence in our life. Children are being taken out. They're taken out by all kinds of music. Think about music for a minute. Look at the ruling influence in everyone's life. Really, the really number one ruling influence in everyone's life as a child is music. It's affected us. It goes right into the soul. In fact, while we're talking about that, why not go to uh, Isaiah 14? Isaiah 14. Who do you think sets the trends of the world? The dress. We are being influenced by the news. We are being influenced on billboards. 
We can't allow any of these influences to rule us. We must maintain the influence of Christ. We can't allow what somebody else is doing to influence compared to what Christ has to do. Isaiah 14 and verse 12. Would you read it with me? How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. He was known as the son of the morning. Why? Because morning is a representation of light. He was known as the son of light. And in this light is one of the things that he brought every day was praise. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He said, oh, Lucifer, how you have fallen from heaven. How you, uh, how you have fallen. You are cut down to the ground. You were weak. You weakened the nations. Verse 13. For you have said in your what? Heart. I. In other words, I. This is what I want. This is what I feel. This is what I'm going to do. I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Or I'll also sit on a mountain of the congregation. On the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the most high God. See, music promotes gods within individuals. That's what's happening now. Self-gods. Self-gods, you can listen to so much, all kinds of music, whether it's rap, hip-hop, all kinds of things. A lot of these things are promoting self-gods now. And in this, this is what the Lord says in response. You shall be brought down to hell to the lowest depths of the pit. Go to Ezekiel 28. The five eyes. That's a five-fold ministry of eye. In fact, pride has five letters in it. P-R-I-D-E. Personal reverence into a deadly end. Pride is a tremendous influence, isn't it? And we know that pride protects self. And fear protects pride. Again, we must step back and start looking at what is my ruling influence is my ruling influence my children? Is my ruling... In other words, all of my decisions, are they associated... What, what's, in, what's influencing my decision? What's influencing my financial? What's influencing my work? What's influencing everything I do? What's influencing all of these things? And if we're easily influenced now, what's going to happen later? If people are easily influenced now with the gift of deception, which brings blindness, what's going to happen later? Remember, that fruit of influence of the demonic arena will promote division. It doesn't promote unity. It promotes division. It doesn't promote love. It promotes self. And its end result will promote fear and torment. In verse 12, verse, uh, Ezekiel 28, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. We know this wasn't a man. This was prophetically about Lucifer. You were in Eden, the garden of God. We know no man was in there, right? <laughs> Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, diamond, braille, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald, with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Why? Because he was the praise and worship leader of the universe. You are the anointed cherub who covers, covers what? The universe with praise. You were on the holy mountain of God. At that time, it was known as the earth. You walk back and forth in the midst of her fiery storms because he was here when God created the earth. He saw it. He was the first angel created. He was with the Lord when God created everything. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. So let me tell you something about music. That's why 
We praise and worship. There's a lot of people that are, look at, there's three chambers in the tabernacle. There's the outer court, holy place, most holy place. You can listen to Christian contemporary music, which has a message of salvation. But I can guarantee you they will not allow you into the holy place. They'll keep you in the outer court. So you can listen to the message all day long. Oh, yeah, I'm listening to Christian music. Yeah, that's cool. There's Christian rap, all of the stuff, Christian whatever, Christian country, Christian rock, Christian. But there's a difference between outer court music and holy of holies music. There's one that just gives you a message. There's one that brings you praise and brings you worship into his presence. One will keep you out of his presence, even though it's Christian music. It just gives you a message. See, we got to know these things. What's your influence? What is your ruling influence? Again, I'm not against contemporary music. But I, I believe it's more for evangelizing. Once you've been evangelized, you want God's presence all the time. There's a difference. You don't need contemporary music. It makes you temporary. And who's behind it? You know, think about, you know how many Christian rappers there are now that are not even Christian? How many of them are mixing their music with the demonic uh, dudes that promote demonic music? Now they're coming together? And they're calling it Christian music and making Christian uh, albums and DVDs, not albums, CDs and whatever. Albums are over with. Hallelujah. Well, they might call them albums now. I don't know. But yeah, they're mixing it together. Why? They've infiltrated to make money. Because many places have gone secular without God. But see, their God really is not our God. How many churches have turned over are now promoting same-sex marriage? In fact, some of these places are marrying them. What influence? Who's their ruling influence? Totally rejecting what the Word of God says. I'm telling you, we are in a time where we've got to begin to recognize this stuff. Stop justifying your ruling influence and start recognizing and getting rid of it. Amen. Without God's presence, you and I are nothing. The world tells us in 1 John chapter 5. Hallelujah. A couple more scriptures. 1 John chapter 5. And we've heard this over and over and over. In verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, keeps himself. Keeps, by keeping yourself, you're recognizing. You're keeping yourself. You're acknowledging, you're recognizing what's ruling you. What influence is ruling me? What influence is ruling my house? What influence is ruling me? What's the ruling influence? Keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway, under the sway, under the influence of the wicked one. So we see that the whole world is lying under the sway of the wicked one. Amen? And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true and in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Why? Because they influence. They influence. And Revelation 13. In verse 11, Revelation 13, verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and a spoke like a dragon. 
He exercises all the authorities of the first beast in the presence and causes, everyone say causes, the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That word causes here means influence. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that beast, that image of the beast should both speak and cause. Everyone say cause. Many, as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. In other words, he's going to influence. He causes, look at, he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. He causes, he influences. Didn't say forced, said causes. Here's the wisdom. Let him who underst has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, his number is 666. And I want to close at 2 Corinthians 4. Actually, yeah. No, go to Galatians chapter 5 for a second. I'm gonna, I want to seal this pretty good. The fruits of influence. There's fruits of influence, okay? So when these fruits of influence, the fruits of influence are the works of the flesh. Everyone say the, the fruits Fruit. of influence Fruit. are the works Fruit. of the flesh. In Galatians 5, in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. Hatred, that sorcery means drug use. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, and revelries, and bitterness, and hatred, and all the rest. And alike of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice, those who practice, those who practice, in other words, what you're being influenced with, if you're practicing what you're being influenced with, if it's demonic influence and you're practicing that, because we know that it brings deception and that deception brings blindness, these are fruits of the demonic influence. It says if you're practicing such things like this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Everybody got it. And now I'll go to 2 Corinthians 4. And we'll close here. Is everybody okay? You want to be led or misled? Remember, one promotes division, one promotes unity. In verse 7. But we have what? This treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. In other words, that influence is trying to hard press you all the time. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Christ also may be manifested in our body. In other words, we want never lose the ruling influence of your life that is the Christ character. The Christ character in our life must be the ruling influence. We may step out of line, but we got to get right back. We may come to a boundary of warning, but we got to get right back. You know, the Holy Spirit is always warning us. When we reject his warning, we, re we grieve him and he steps back. Next thing you do, you'd be manifesting something else. 
Amen? Amen. We want to be led, not misled. Why? Because we must be united in spirit and in truth and in power. Time is running out. The influence is getting stronger. That's why he says it's hard-pressed. It's getting stronger. There's demonic influences and all kinds of deceptive influences everywhere pressing on us all the time. All the time. What good is it to gain the world and lose your soul? Amen? Search yourself. Examine yourself. What is your ruling influence? And start putting things in divine order. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed that's been imparted grow and bear fruit for your glory. And let your kingdom come and your will be done in us and through us. And bless your people in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. I want to encourage everyone to begin and continue to intercede and pray. We have a booklet that's called Penetrating Prayers. It's excellent. These prayers penetrate. They slap the head of the powers of darkness. They remove demons. They push the kingdoms back of darkness. If everyone would be first strikers, there'd be a lot more victory. Amen? <laughs> so anyone who writes us or calls us would gladly send you a free Penetrating Prayer booklet. I want to thank all the listeners and the viewers. And for more teachings and resources, please visit us at theeternallibrary.org. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and heal you and uplift you because you're a new creation in Christ. And old things have passed away and all things are made new in Christ Jesus.